Praise the Lord. A good hallelujah for a special time. We well, thank the Lord for being here today. I will bless the name of the Lord for this special occasion. And I pray that this will be an unforgettable day in the lives of our young people, in the lives of all our youths all over this state and this nation and this continent, as well as in the lives of the parents, fathers, and mothers, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this time. We pray, Lord, that the seed that is sown in the hearts of this young generation will bear fruit, will grow, and will make impact, have influence in our country, in our continent, and beyond, in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church, especially the young people, say, Before we pray, I want to refer you to the scriptures. I want to briefly talk to you on the Achievers Alphabet for Aspirants. Aspirants are the people that aspire. They have something in them. And they have an eagle vision. They aspire, number one, by grace. They aspire, number two, to grow. They aspire, number three, for the goodness of the Lord. They have the goodness of the Lord on them already, and they aspire by grace. They aspire for growth. They aspire also for His goodness, and they aspire for the goal. You see, if you're going to make anything in life, there must be a goal set before you. It's the peak of your career. You see, that's why I studied. That's why I was trained. And this is my goal. And every day you are aspiring to that goal. You aspire towards godliness. And then you aspire to be greater. You want to be greater today than you were yesterday. You want to be greater this year, this session, that you were last year and in the last session. And because of that, listen, you are not competing with anybody. You are competing with yourself. Today, I compete with myself. What I was yesterday, I'm competing with that so that I'm aspiring to be greater than I was yesterday. And then uh, you aspire for glory. His glory, future glory, and the final glory, aspire, aspire. Now, the achievers alphabet for aspirants. You know, alphabet means A, B, C, up to Z. And you cannot write any story without the alphabet. The story of your life, if it's going to be reaching, well reaching, appropriately reaching for people to read. There are many people that try it and nobody reads what they are reaching. But if you want to write the story, the story of a life, a life growing, a life having a goal, a life of achievement. If you're going to have such a story written, you need the alphabet. And the alphabet's A, acknowledge. 
you have to acknowledge God in your life. In Proverbs chapter 3, reading from verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Let there be no space or vacancy in your heart that is not trusting in the Lord. And lean not on thine own understanding. Look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, In all thy ways, in all thy courses, in all your journey, in everything you do, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Acknowledge God is your creator, is your redeemer, is your provider, is your supporter. Acknowledge yourself, what he planted in you, what he gave you to fly with, and what he gave you to mount up with. Acknowledge him and acknowledge yourself. B is to believe. You believe in God, you believe in Christ, you believe in yourself as well. Believing in God, great. Believing in Christ, great. But then you believe in yourself. I can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And because I can, I will. And because I will, I can, I will, I must. You compel yourself. You are your own policeman to drive you and to move you and to make you the man, the woman, you ought to be believed. In Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. See, is to conquer. Now, you cannot conquer the world until you conquer yourself. You cannot conquer society until you conquer yourself. You must conquer. There are things that will rise up and then stand in your way and say that goal, you cannot reach it. And it may be laziness, it may be idleness, whatever it is, you conquer that thing and then you move on. And praise the Lord, it says in Romans chapter 8 verse 37, nay, in all these things, whatever happens in life, in all these things, whatever stands in your way, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. D is to decide. You see, there are people that are always here and there. They are wavering and they are never able to decide. Are you going to study more? I don't know yet. Are you going to move on? I don't know yet. Are you going to apply for that competitive position? I don't know yet. They never decided. But the man, the woman that makes it in life if is a man of decision. Have you heard of Daniel? In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, it says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. He is to eliminate. He is to eliminate. There are many things that come into our lives. They crowd our time and they crowd out the essential things of life. The place I need to go, the work I need to do, the book I need to write and the things I need to study and these things will come in and those things are not essential they're not important and they're not part of what will make me what I ought to be in life I learn you learn we learn to eliminate eliminate those things out of your life that will not help me I get rid of that that will not move me forward. I eliminate that. In Psalm 101, reading from verse 3, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. I don't hate them, but I hate the work. The work that will distract you. The idea that will pounce on you and the things that will not help you to get to where you ought to get to, I will not set that before me. I hate the work of them that on our side, it shall not cleave to me. Eliminate, F is to forget. You know, the things that have happened in life, 
nobody has gone through this life without being misunderstood, being misrepresented, or criticized, or condemned, or whatever. And those things become like a baggage. I want you to picture you have a bag at your back. Every time somebody does something against you, you don't appreciate, it's like a little pebble, drop it in that bag. Another person criticizes you, drop it in that bag. Another person does something you don't like, you are dropping, that bag becomes heavy. And you are going through life. And you are carrying a heavy bag. You want to climb a mountain. You want to climb a ladder. And you are carrying a bag of pebbles. Now, forget the past. They will, they will they maybe criticize or oppose or whatever. If you don't forget all those past things, you'll not be able to move up. And so part of the alphabet of making you the person you ought to be is to forget. We're told in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18, it says, remember ye not the former things. That just means whatever has happened in the past, forget all about it. Neither consider the things of old. And then in verse 19 it says, behold, I will do a new thing. You are going forth in sight and something new is going to be scattered all over society. Something new will happen to you, will happen in your family, and you will be the best thing that ever happened in your family in Jesus' name. They will not be able to write the story of your family without including your name. They will say, he made our family great. He made our family to be known because you forget the past and then you allow the Lord to do the new thing in your life. Behold, I will do a new thing now. Where will that new thing begin? Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. G is to give. You know, the way we get up in life is we give a helping hand, we give a smile, we give the knowledge we have got to benefit society, and you give and give and give, and what you give is what you are sowing, and what you sow is what you reap. If you give nothing, you get nothing. If you're going through life and all the skills you've got, all the knowledge you have got, all the revelation you have got, and all the ability you have got, you give nothing, you go through life and everybody will forget you. But then, if you're always giving whatever you have, if you're always sharing whatever you have, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 35, I have showed you all things, how that so lives boring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive why because if you only receive that's all you have if you give, it shall be given unto you a measure that is pressed down, shaking together, running over. Well, men, well, God and men, put in your bosom. Give. H is to hold. You hold fast. You hold on. You hold forth. You see, a person like that who is holding fast and holding on and holding up, it will not be a person that is hidden behind a rock somewhere. It's always stretching forth. It's always giving something. That's why Jesus said in Revelation chapter 2, verse 25, but that which you have already, that which you have already, you must know you have something. You go through that education for all these years, you must know you've got something. And then if you're a Christian, you've got Jesus, you've got the promise, you've got the power, you've got the name of Jesus, and that which you have already, hold fast till I come. The Lord will meet you holding on, holding fast in Jesus' name. And then I is to ignore, ignore. You know, there are th things happening. You are in the exam hall and a dog is barking outside. If you concentrate on that, you will not know what to write. You just have to ignore. 
you are doing something other people are playing pranks or they're playing whatever game you have to ignore that if you don't ignore that you'll be dancing to every tune and if you dance to every tune around you you will soon be lame in your in your legs but if you learn to ignore that one is not my business that one does not concern me that one will not contribute to my progress in life and then you learn to ignore you will make it am i talking to anybody i said you will make it look at proverbs chapter 24 verse 21 proverbs chapter 24 verse 21 my son fear thou the king the lord and the king Middle not with them that are given to change. Middle not with them that are given to change. That one doesn't concern me. Middle not. That one is not going to contribute to my progress. Middle not. Don't get involved with anything that will not help you keep on climbing and getting to your goal. Ignore. And then J is to judge. Ah, I thought we are not supposed to judge. We're not supposed to judge people. We judge ideas. We judge opinions. We judge happenings. Whatever is happening around me, I need to judge. Is it good? Is it neutral? Is it bad? Can I practice that? Can I follow that? He is following the promptings of his own mind, of his own heart. I have my own heart. I need to judge. Does that agree with my calling? Does that agree with me? I'm going judge for yourselves. That's what we're told in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Prove all things that judging. You're not judging people. You're judging the idea. You're judging the opinion. You're judging the image. You're judging their principles. You're judging their practices. You're judging whether that's right for you or not. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. And then in verse 22, it says, You have seen from all appearance of evil. K is to know. You know God. You must know yourself. You must know yourself. Am I built? And constituted for mathematics, I must know myself. Am I built and constituted for governmental policies to study? I must know myself. What am I created for? What am I known for? In choosing a cause, in following a cause, and in following through, I must know. I must know what I have ability and skill to do, and then pursue that. It says in Psalm, in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2, also, that a soul be without knowledge, it's not good. That a soul be without the knowledge of God and the knowledge of his creation and the knowledge of who I am and the knowledge of why God placed me here for my soul to be without that knowledge, it is not good. And he that his says with his feet sinneth, L is to love. You know what the Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. It says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Yes, we have to do that. He loved us so much. He gave his only begotten son. He gave us the greatest gift we can have from heaven. And we need to give him ourselves. And the Lord says in verse 38, it says in verse 38, it said, this is the first commandment and the great commandment. Then verse 39 says, the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 40 says, on these two commandments, loving God and loving men loving the almighty and loving your fellow brother and sister on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets and then M is to move M is to move you know there are two words I need to throw out to you there motion and emotion emotion is you know I feel down I feel fearful, I feel rejected, I feel I cannot move forward. 
you know, you cannot change that emotion by just thinking. You cannot change that emotion and then turn around and then move off. It is the motion that changes the emotion. That's why anytime you are down, Anytime you have difficulty, anytime you have challenge, anytime it appears I cannot move on again, move, do something, get up, go here, go there. By the time your feet are in motion and your hands are in motion and your head, your brain is in motion, your emotion will change. You will not remain down. You will not remain fearful. In church, we say amen. In the lecture hall, we don't say amen, we allow the lecturer to keep on talking. But in church, when something is said that registers in your heart, that is sown as a seed in your life, then you say amen. Move. Moses said in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, and Moses said unto the people, fear not, stand still, stand still, stand still. If you stand still, your fear, your fear will remain there. If you stand still, all you are thinking about will remain there. That's why now if you look at verse 15, in verse 15 it says, And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward, that they go forward. Don't allow the fear to keep you standing still. Don't allow what you are thinking to keep you standing still. Don't ever stand still. Let each day contribute to the progress you are making towards the goal. Go forward, you will achieve. And then N is to nurture, nurture. The seed that is sown in your heart, nurture. The encouragement you have, nurture. The passion you have to be somebody in life, nurture that passion as you go through life. Uh, let me give you an illustration. Let's say, for example, there is a lion that is somewhere. If you stab that lion, if you overlook that lion, if you ignore that lion, that lion will starve to death. Let me change that. In everyone, there is a Judas. In everyone, there is a John. There is a Judas that is greedy, covetous, wanting to be free. There is a John that is loving and he wants to love the Lord with all his heart. Judas there, John there, starve the Judas to death in your life. The things that are negative, the things that are characteristic of Judas, just don't feed it. Just don't respond to it. Stab that Judas and then feed the John, feed the love, and feed the faith, and feed the good thing in you. You're not sure what is right. Look at Jude chapter 1, verse 20, but here, beloved, building up yourselves. Nobody will do it for you building up yourself, encouraging yourself, and positively grooming yourself, and nurturing yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, is to occupy. Don't allow any moment of idleness. Don't allow any moment of just, you know, your, your mind is vacant, your brain is vacant, every part of you is vacant. Then, because the devil finds work for the idle hand. That's why we're told in Matthew chapter 20, verse 6, and about the eleventh hour, he went, the Lord Jesus went out and found others standing idle. Standing idle. There's a lot to do. Standing idle. There are, there are days or there are, there are fields to conquer. Standing idle. There are books to write. Standing idle. There's a research of what is not known yet to be known and standing idle. There's a possibility of invention. Inventing things that have not been and then standing idle. Never let anyone of the Lord Jesus Christ find you idle. He found others standing idle and says unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? Occupy and then persevere. Persevere. 
you know, Thomas Edison, we're told uh, he was uh, trying to invade the electric light. He tried this, it didn't work. Tried this, it didn't work. He tried more than 9,000 things, we're told, and it didn't work. And then uh, he kept on trying and kept on trying until he succeeded. You will succeed. Don't just pick it up once and drop it, or ten times and drop it. If that's your goal, if that's where you're going, and if that is where God, the Holy Ghost, has marked up for you that you're going to reach, keep on, keep on, keep on. You will get there. I will get there. Look at First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 43 and said unto his servant, Give a go up now and look and look at the sea. And then and he, and he went up and he looked and said, There is nothing. Elijah will not allow him to stop. Persevere. And then he said, Go again. He went again. There's nothing. Go again. And he went again, he said, there's nothing until seven times. Then he saw a little hand like a cloud, some, you will see something. First time, nothing, do it again. Second time, nothing, do it again. And it is that perseverance that gets you to where you are going to be. It will take perspiration. It will take pursuit. It will take you putting pressure on yourself and saying, I must because I can and because I will. And as you persevere, I pray the Lord will take you to the top of your mountain in Jesus' name. Heal is to question. Ask questions. Don't just say, well, I don't understand. And let it go like that. Ask question. Daniel chapter 7 verse 16 says, I came near unto one of them that stood by. Daniel was a great man. But there is always somebody that knows more than that great man. Daniel was a favored man. There's always somebody that knows more than that favored man. Whoever you are, whatever your talent, whatever your score, whatever your grade, whatever the class you came out from with, there is always somebody in life that knows more than you know that can answer that question. And I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of things. R is to reason. It's to reason. You know, some people throw away their thinking cap. They don't reason at all. They don't think at all. Somebody said something. They just say, I don't agree. Why don't you agree? Why don't you think? It is when we think, we use our brain. It is when we think, we develop that brain. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, but strong meat belongeth to them that are uh, full age, even to those who by reason of use, by reason of use, have had their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. And then TS is to search, search, search. Uh, there was a man many years ago, he was a bad man, a terrible man. And because of his crimes, he was put in prison. And when he got into prison, he was saying, you know, still like that, my bad, heart bad, everything bad. But then he was uh, going across and there was a service going on in the chapel. And the preacher in the chapel said something you know, that fascinated him. He had never read the Bible from that time. And that thing that fascinated him, he said, I want to know in the Bible where that thing is. And he did not to use the concordance. He did not to use anything. He didn't even ask the man that made the quotation, What's his way of knowing that thing that the preacher has said that fascinated him? He said, I will search for it in the Bible myself. And he started from Genesis, he read Exodus, and went on reading, went on reading, until he will discover that verse. And that verse is in Hebrews. And Hebrews is near the end of the Bible. Before he got to that verse and knew that verse, he discovered Jesus, he was born again. 
his life was transformed because he was searching search in your life a new idea search a new inspiration search a new word that comes to your heart search something that other people say it's impossible in that field in mathematics in chemistry they've never been able to solve that equation search and as that thing draws in your mind and you follow through and you're searching and searching you'll discover what others have not discovered in john chapter 5 verse 39 search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they that testify of me t is to think to think and remember the natural thought is far below the thoughts of God because it says my thoughts are not your thoughts neither your way my ways as the heaven is higher than the earth so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts build up your thinking faculty encourage yourself and use your brain and think and use your mind and think and use your spirit and think and then in philippians chapter 4 verse 8 it says uh, finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think don't just read, think, don't just analyze, think on these things, and then you is to understand. If you go through life, you don't understand language. If you go through life, you don't understand principles. If you go through life, you don't understand sowing and reaping principles. If you go through life and you don't understand anything, you don't understand salvation, you don't understand character, you don't understand virtually anything, your life will not be glittering like a like shining star. But when you understand, I will understand. I said, I will understand. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. Consider what I say. If you're going to understand, you must consider. You heard something, don't just say, you know, stand up and go your way. Understand what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding. Tell me, in all things, I wanted to picture. What if I have understanding? in all things how to relate with people how to encourage people how to serve people how to you know jail with other people of the same precious faith what if i understand all things understand the way he thinks understand what will make him get stirred up and do the right what if i understood all things you'll be a terrific man a terrific woman consider what i say and the lord give thee understanding in all things thee is to value value yourself value yourself. Don't just throw away your life. It just into any dungeon or into any valley. You value yourself. It says in Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 6, and not five sparrows sold for, for two fathers, and not one of them is forgotten before God. Look at this, look at this in verse 7. It says, but even the very ears of your head are all numbered if I have so much value, the air of my head would I even go to the barber to cut off is valuable about my heart, about my life, about the blood that pumps in my body, about my bones, about the totality of myself. You are valuable. I said you are valuable. Fear not, therefore, ye are more value the millions of sparrows the many sparrows and then w is wake up wake up wake up we have slept for too long we have been dormant for too long the man in a man in us that ought to rise and pursue and get somewhere had been dormant for so long wake up it is time to work it is time to achieve it is time to hold it is time to make of yourself somebody for the glory of god that's why it says in ephesians chapter 5 verse 14 wherefore he says i 
awake, thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. In your ways, he'll give you light. At the crossroads, he'll give you light. In the darkness of this world, he will give you light. Wake up. There's something for you to do. Now, X is to X-ray. X-ray. You know, X-ray. What the X-ray machine can detect, the natural eyes cannot detect. You come before the Lord. And in Second uh, Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, uh, examine yourselves. X-ray. Examine your motives, X-ray. Examine your intention, X-ray. Examine your progress, X-ray. Examine the things that are holding you down, X-ray. And when you find those things that the natural eye cannot understand, then all those things you X-ray, the grace of God will come to your life and brush off and cleanse off anything that will retard you. You're welcome.